I'm Gerard back with you and today we're going to take a closer look at the 79B that we saved from going to the junkyard. We're going to get it up in the air, take a look underneath of it, and we're going to start looking at what it's going to take to put it back on the road. Does any of the electrics work? If we hook a ba battery up to it, will it just go up in smoke? Does the engine turn over? Things like that, you know, look at the brakes. So let's get it up on the lift, get going. Strong like bull. Well, now we got it up in the air, got the wheels off. We're going to take a quick look underneath, see what we got. And um, before we do that, we are trying to figure out a name for this project, and we, as of yet, haven't come up with anything we like. So if you guys got any ideas or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. So we're going to do a quick look here. Obviously, we need rack boots. Uh, bushings here are about as expected. We've got the rear ones a little worse, so we may end up putting bushings in it. But the tie rod, inner and outer tie rods seem okay. There's a little bit of play in the uh, bearings, but not that bad. And the kingpins don't have much play in them, but this bottom bolt might be seized in the lower trending on this side. We'll have to look at that a little closer later. And of course, this thing was supposed to have a rear ba really bad rear main seal, and we're not going to know how bad it is till we get it to run. Um, this side, the rust is looking pretty good. We're looking really solid down this side. Floors are solid. Castle rail is really solid. This side here, castle rail is not quite so solid. Got a little bit, of rust, a little bit of rust starting here, and obviously a fair bit down through here. I'm not going to get too worried about that. We're going to treat that and probably to, to keep it at bay and pretty much leave it go because on this car, we're not wanting to get into what it's going to take to fix that. And this is not enough to make this thing structurally unsafe to drive. Obviously, we're going to need to replace a, sl a slave cylinder. My guess is we're just going to go ahead and purchase the whole clutch hydraulic kit, which is everything from the master, master cylinder, slave, hose, the whole works. Just do it that way. Uh, exhaust systems, obviously, whenever they did the uh, carburetor conversion, they put the, the early style exhaust system on it, and it's still in good shape, so we'll leave that alone. Um, we got our normal leaks at the transmission, so we definitely need to check the fluid see how much oil is in it. U joints here, they feel pretty good and aside from greasing them, we may not have to do anything with them. Uh, suspension on the back. Um, when it comes to the shocks, I'm gonna wait till we drive it and then actually see what we, what the wet, if we actually see any wear wetness here. Rear hose, is obviously we're gonna go ahead and replace that as part of the, the um, doing the brakes because this is often forgotten so it doesn't look as bad as the front but we're going to do it as part of it we got a little bit of rust here on this side but the other side actually looks a lot better um, even though this side feels like it's been sealed after they fixed after they did the repair they didn't seal this side so we're going to have to put a little seam sealer in there um, the gas tank looks pretty decent from the bottom side, but until we make sure the hoses are good on the separator tank and then s see what kind of smells we're getting into the, uh, the, tr the boot, uh, that's when we'll know if we need to do anything with it. Because if we smell it, if we can smell fuel in the boot with all the lines being good, then we've probably got rust holes in the top of the tank. It does have an aftermarket rotary style pump on it instead of the original SU poking through here, which is just fine as long as it works, but it may have to be regulated down. Uh, most of these are usually putting out too much pressure and we do plan on likely swapping this to SUs, so we're gonna have to come up with a regulator for it. 
And then we obviously have a wheel seal leaking on this side, which is not unexpected. If these leak, it's all usually always the right side. So it's not terribly uncommon. Of course, wheel cylinders, we expect to be toast. Um, and they are. So the next thing we want to do real quick is find out, will the engine turn over? Will it, is it frozen or anything? No, it's not frozen, so we're good there. Um, next thing, we can stick a battery in it, see if the electrical system goes up in smoke after all the water that's been in the interior, or if um, anything happens at all. So once again, the, one of the old Jeep batteries comes into play, got it sitting in there. Right off the bat, the clock's actually moving. So that's a good sign. Fuel pump works. It, it cranks. The switch gets stuck, doesn't want to release, but it does crank. Everything. Fan's not working. I think we just sprung a leak in the fuel line. So, no more playing with electricals for in a moment. <laughs> yeah, we did. Well, I guess I'm an idiot. I um, forgot when I was doing that, the top of the carburetor's not there and no one ever put a, anything in the end of the line to plug it, so it was just pumping out of there. So amazingly enough, all the lights are working, but um, pretty much nothing else is. We got no heater fan, no wipers, no turn signals, no uh, four-way flashers, nothing's working. So now we're gonna check to see if the fans work. So with the key on, oh, <laughs> not, you don't have to try to start it, just key on. Um, just touch these two wires. All right, we got one fan working and one not. All right, so now we're gonna run a quick compression check on it. Because remember, we got the little, uh, early head, late motor, could be really low compression, but also could be low compression because it's sat for a long time, This. Rings may not be seating well, could have valves not seating well because of rust on the seats. Well, let's see what we got. Well, that's 105. On 25. Let's see, that one's probably got a valve seat not sealing. On 35. Overall, I was expecting it to be worse. Um, I don't think it's been rebuilt because if it's been rebuilt, then it's not going to be an 80,000 mile motor anymore. It's going to be something lower than that. And then we would see compression readings of around 150 to 160 on a good engine, but what we can do, but like I said, we don't know if the rings are sealing from rust from sitting, whatever. We can put oil down the cylinders and recheck it, see what we get, and run a uh, leak down test, see what we get. So now we're gonna see if we got any kind of spark. I've got my spark checker here. Go ahead and crank it a little bit. Yep, 
we got spark. It's not a good blue spark, but we got a, we got spark. So it should fire over and make some kind of noise if we put something down the throat of that carburetor. Should we try it? Now while cranking with the plugs out, we were getting 25 pounds of oil pressure showing on the gauge. So um, let's just see what happens. Put a little bit of our universal solvent down here. Give it a try. All right, yeah. Okay, hit it again. Hmm. So yeah, if she's going to run, go down the road. How much oil pressure are we seeing when it's running? So I think we got a reasonably healthy engine, even if it is low compression. Now after running it a little bit, we can actually check the compression again. It might come up some. So, but we got to either put a top on this carburetor and get this to work or swap it out with something else.